All right. Boarding in progress. All right. So good evening, good afternoon, good morning to all who join us today for an incredible webinar by my good friend, Ethan Segev, who is going to talk to you about how you can read your customer client even before meeting him. And this is with the organization that we are calling TAB. It's a global organization, the Alternative Board, who help businesses grow and live better. And we do it through a unique system that's called Alternative Board. If you have never heard about it, you're welcome to contact me and, and I'll explain further. And, and if you are, and there are a few members here, some of our valued members are here. So it's a good thing, Ami, Doron, Lior. And so I'm really happy to see you all. I've got Liam from England as well. So uh, Ethan, I'm sure it's gonna be interesting. And I suggest you all open your cameras and I think you find most valuable as you see, this is recorded. So uh, you can leave also in the chat your email and I'll send the recording later on. Ethan, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, good day. Uh, my name is Ethan. So, so, sorry, we have to some way to shut down the noise, not to interfere. To have, okay, so my name is Eitan. I'm Israeli, but South African born. So you will have to adjust to my accent. It's a combination of English and Israeli. I've been here for many years. I was born in South Africa. When I turned 13, I went back to South Africa. All my trick, my trick years were in South Africa. And when I turned 18, I came back to Israel and I'm in Israel for the last uh, almost 40 years. I'm 57 years old and uh, we are going to have a great, great, I think a great uh, one hour of trying to, to put you into this important and exciting world. So let's start with a short film that will show a bit about what we are going to talk about. going to talk today about three topics. One is body language, one is face reading and micro expressions. But before I start, who has the courage to have me try and say what I see on his face? From you guys that I see, who will put a hand up that I will, I will try and analyze? Leo, Liam, whoever has the courage for me to analyze them, it will be a positive. Liam, Liam. So I'm going to... Hold on, I'm going to I'll see you, Liam. Hold on. I, I'll put I'll, you put him in the center. Yeah, put, put him in the center. In, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. With the focus, uh... in, I can see Liam. So what I see, oh, great. Now I see you. Yeah. First of all, what I see about you, Liam, is that you are, you are adjusted and you know exactly what's going on. You are very uh, 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 publicly and socially you know everything that goes on. Intelligence, if I need to find intelligence and know about things that are going on, you have it, you have it. Uh, you are a person that takes upon himself a lot. Before you even have the, the courage, you take about yourself. You first take and then you say what I took on myself. Uh, you do have uh, presentation abilities. You are very accurate and you're very, uh, you don't talk much, but when you talk, you talk very accurate and to the point. You don't just talk just for the sake of talking. You have greatness in, in, in reaching and helping people. You are a coach. I don't know if, if you act as a coach, but you, are, you can be great as a coach because you have the ability to help others uh, improve themselves. You do have it a uh, big time. You don't compromise on quality. You are very optimistic. You know to show everyone that you're on their, on their same level, but then you do what you feel like doing. So you know how to uh, uh, be a, uh, like a politician. You know how to, to handle situation. 
and 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 make people understand that you with them you you uh, you are you are very accurate you see mistakes from a kilometer and you you have lots of uh, leadership abilities lots of leadership abilities and I'd say uh, another thing which is very important the creativity you're very creative you you think out of the box you find interesting solutions you you think very creative it doesn't have to be art it can be business wide business oriented but very 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 uh, uh, accurate very good and and I think that whoever works underneath you, uh, you do a great job. That's that's what I see. Thank you. <laughs> what do you say about what I said? Um, do you agree? The, the, well, um, I, I don't know whether you know Ethan, but um, we do a personality profile at uh, TAP, um, and I come out as a high eye. So I am a bit of a talker, um, I, as Nia and, and a few of the team know. Um, I, I do like creative solutions to, to, to problems. Um, I do enjoy coaching. I, I'm not currently a, a facilitator at the Alternative Board. I, I support new facilitators in. So I, I would say 60, 70% of what you said kind of resonates a little bit with me. I'm glad you didn't pull out all the darkened uh, lines under the eyes. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, but uh, um, you you can talk a lot about subjects that you love. Personally, you don't you don't, for example, you don't you don't show uh, uh, when you talk. You do. You, are, you everyone is emotional, but you things topics that you like. You will talk a lot, but on the topic that that you like, as a person, you keep a lot inside. You don't show everyone what you feel so easily. You you. And that, 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 that's what I see, but you are a great coach and you, then, then that's what I see. I, I, I really, um, I, I've done Myers-Briggs before from a personality perspective. I've done DISC profiles before. Uh, and actually going through a DISC profile is quite frightening because the report that comes out of it for me is, is quite accurate. Um, so I, I, I must have answered the questions truthfully. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, at the DNT, I mean, uh, we, uh, yeah, glad you came, Liam. Uh, you're flying all, all over from the, from the United Kingdom. So it's really, um, I, I didn't tell if he ate any bits. I mean, I know Liam mm -hmm. and uh, knowing well. So it's amazing. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank here, you. Yeah. Let's have another one and then we continue of our presentation. Who else wants to be? I have it in it. I see it here. Okay. Who is the next one? Who raised his hand? Doron. Uh, Doron? Yes. Let's have Doron. Doron. Yes. Let's have Doron. One second. In a Schwartz. Schwartz. Yeah. 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 One second. Uh, Replacement. Replacement. There you go. Okay. Doron, can you for a second just pull out your glasses and then you can put them back? I just want to see your. Okay. You can pull them back. <laughs> you can, I already know. So first of all, uh, Doron, what I see about you, that you are very capable of doing many things at the same time. Uh, you, you do a lot. You don't, you don't just uh, uh, concentrate on one topic. Secondly, you're very, uh, uh, you do your way, your way. You're very, uh, when you do things, you do it your way and you, uh, you're very independent. You, you rely uh, mostly on yourself. Uh, I see, I think that you're very competitive. You like being the winner at whatever you do. Uh, you also are very accurate. You see mistakes from a kilometer. You, uh, you have the ability to, uh, when people are working underneath you, you have the ability to make them do things. You have this, this pressing, this strength to, to make others work and do what you, what you uh, go for it. When, when uh, you can be very cynical, I'd say you have a cynical, the ability to be uh, cynical, you catch things very quickly. You're very quick at catching things and you are very analytical. You analyze things very, very um, accurately, but the, your strength is to be able to analyze them very quickly. You come you very quickly at coming to solutions and doing things. You choose your friends, 
you choose the people that that you, that you want to work with, and you you also have lots of uh, leadership abilities. You can run big operations and small operations. I think you, you can do a lot, and you don't compromise on quality. If you decide something to be done, it has to be very, uh, very good. I mean, uh, what's important for you is is not the uh, the the price of things, is the quality. Everyone price is important, but I think quality is more important to you than the price of things that you decide to buy and sell and do. And it's also for you when when you work with others, uh, you, your the quality is the most important thing that makes decisions for you. Quality is what I see in you a uh, very big time. Amazing, really amazing. Uh, uh, only the, I'm not uh, cynical, but all the other things are accurate. Uh, frankly, I'm amazed, you know, uh, God is really amazing. Really amazing. Thank you, sir. I gave you. Thank you very much, Doron. Um, so this is a, a small uh, uh, example. And today we're going to talk about a few things. I'll make you slightly work. You people will have to work a bit, not too much, but that will give the, the lecture, will give it a, a more, more a strength. So let's 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 move on and see what, what we can do. And by the way, this is my family. Um, uh, uh, this is the most important thing in life is our family. So I have three daughters. Um, the one on the right is getting married in a month and a half. Uh, we also are a foster family. You could see there's Tarech. Tarech is born in, a, in Israel, but he's from Eritrea. My wife is only three months younger than me, and she looks so young, so I'm uh, surprised. <laughs> and and, and Lynn, Lynn was an officer, and Yali is, is uh, graduating this next year. I'm a leading expert in personality diagnosis. I work with all the all every 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 place that I, that people uh, need to improve their their abilities and to do things and to learn how to read people is where I work. It's in the army. It's in special services. It's in in universities everywhere. And I also run my the courses. And I have a great thing that I always love to to, to say that uh, Tony Robbins always says the way we communicate with others and with ourselves ultimately determines the quality of our life. So the quality of our life is determined by our ability um, uh, to, to understand to understand others. And um, we'll start with body language. Um, what is body language? You may write on the side, you have on the right, you can start writing. What is body language? Yes, write down, it's very important because it'll get you doing things and, and moving. You'll see that I'll be talking a lot with my hands because I love uh, using my hands when I'm, talk, when I'm talking. But in, uh, in English or Hebrew, in English or Hebrew, what is body language? That's the first question. I'm waiting for answers. <laughs> and can you put me on the, yeah. the center if I can see myself? But, no. Yeah. Nonverbal communication, I'm someone saying. Um, body language is what our body portrays. We have 95% of, 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 of what our body says. Um, uh, our body protects, but you can make it small, but you can, you know, yeah, thank you. Yeah, exactly, that's it. So what does the body portray? Our body language portrays what we feel, not what we, we say. We can say many things, but our body conveys what we feel. And why is it so important to read body language? Except for, you can write down, why is it so important to read body language? Yes, I'm making you slightly work. You can write down, why is it, why, why is it near, why would you say it's so important to read body language? Okay, uh, first of all, you can do it also in Hebrew, but um, in my opinion, uh, body language, um, I want to make sure that my message come across the way I want it to. So I want, if if something doesn't come across, then I can adjust in real time. Body, exactly, body language rarely lies. 
The body lang language portrays what we feel. When, we, when you uh, pitch someone to buy uh, uh, something from you and you say the price, let's say it's $1,000, you can see on the face how they, they accept. If, if they, they go with their eyebrows up and they're surprised of the price, before they answer, you can say to them, well, I can give it to you in, in, uh, in, in 10, 10, uh, 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 10 things. Uh, whatever we do, whatever we say, once we understand the person in front of us, we can understand that, that he really believes in what we say. For example, about 10 years ago, um, I had a meeting with um, an owner of, 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 uh, uh, of big companies, and I came to him with a business card. I don't know if you know what it is. Some long time ago, we used to have these business cards, and he saw my business card and it said profiler reading people. And he went with the side of his mouth, went up like this, a slight up, meaning that when you go up with the side of the mouth, that means that you are skeptic. You don't believe in what someone said to you. So I said to him, I understand you don't believe in what I'm saying, but let me read your face and we'll see then what's happening. I read his face and then he bought the whole company and I worked with this uh, company for two years just from understanding him so well. So why do why is it important to read body language? And we are going now uh, to 1960. We're going to see the televised confrontation between Nixon and Kennedy. This for, was the first election between two, two uh, people that was televised live in the US, by the way. 90% of the people watched it on TV and 10% listened to the radio. And I'm going to show you, this is the, the major, major picture that you will see from this uh, session. And I want you to, first of all, the person on the left is Kennedy, on the right is Nixon. Who do you think uh, has a better body language? Who do you think sits better? Who portrays and shows that he's more of a, of an alpha guys, please write down what you see on this picture because this picture tells us 1,000 words. What do you see on this picture? Who has the better? Better, who looks better, prepared, better for, for this confrontation? Kennedy, yes, looks very calm and in control. You're correct. Um, Kennedy is relaxed, Nixon is tense, yes. Nixon looks pressured, yes, indeed, you're right. Uh, what else do you see? You're all correct. First of all, the way uh, Kennedy sits, it's like the Queen Elizabeth. It's, it's a sitting position that shows I'm, I, I'm in control. It shows that I'm slightly closed, but I have a, a good sitting. The color, the color of, of the blazer was dark blue, which was good color because it didn't blend with the, with the, uh, with the background. The feet, yeah, the feet placement, as uh, Lyme says, if you look at uh, Nixon, he wants to run away. Look at his hands, look at Nixon's hands. The one hand is resting on the knee. It shows that he, he has a problem there or is he's trying to comfort himself. And if you look at the, at the, at the other hand, it's boxed. It has a shape of a, uh, like he's going to box someone. It just shows that he's under pressure. And when you sit down, yes, Nixon fears Kennedy. When you sit down and you have a blazer, I studied in South Africa high school. So we, when we sat down, we used to open the, the, the blazers. And if you see, yeah, Nixon did not do that. And it, it shows that it's slightly crink, crinkled the, uh, uh, the, the, the blazer. By the way, um, Nixon wasn't well, and you can see he wasn't well, and he kept looking instead of looking at the camera. So let's see what the history says about it. By the way, uh, this is a very important session that was, and we're going to see uh, uh, two minutes that will show us what exactly happened and how strong the, the message was conveyed. So let's see. At 43, JFK is one of the youngest men to ever run for president. His hip approach to campaigning injects a new energy to politics. I come to the Bronx as an old Bronx boy. I used to live in the Bronx. 
By the way, they watch the on TV black and white. It's a color, but it's black and white. But the Kennedy campaign has a plan to sell him to the country. Now, 90% of U.S. households own a television. Good evening. The television stations of the United States are proud to provide facilities for a discussion of issues by the two major candidates for the presidency. The candidates On September 26, 1960, 70 million Nixon people tune in to America's first televised Senator presidential John F. debate. Kennedy. I'm not satisfied until every American enjoys his full constitutional rights. JFK is prepped for his television appearance. The day before, he met with producers and discussed camera angles. He looks tanned and glowing. I don't want the talents of any American to go to waste. He is wearing a blue suit and shirt to reduce glare and stand out against the gray backdrop. Smith, Senator Kennedy. Nixon looks exhausted. He's straight from the campaign trail and is recovering from the flu. He also has a knee injury, making him appear uncomfortable and shifty. There is no question but that we cannot discuss our internal affairs in the United States without recognizing that they have a tremendous bearing on our international position. His gray suit and pale face appear to blend into the set. Campaign issue. I'd like to follow Mr. The Nolan's visual contrast question. between the men the damages Nixon. Answer questions or comment upon one another's answers to questions. Viewers think Kennedy has the edge, even though radio listeners have the opposite impression. During the debate, Kennedy's on-camera performance makes him look like a leader. And old doubts about his youth are forgotten. Studies will later show that this debate made up the minds of four million voters. Three million vote for Kennedy. So our body has much or even more impact than the words we speak. And uh, this is very, very important. It just showed you what body language can show. And we're going to see another uh, short film showing how important and you will see how important the body language is as well. And this person that he's lecturing on, on Ted, Aaron, is not going to say much, but you will see how strong his appearance will be by talking about, we'll see what he's going to talk about. So. Hear that? That's nothing. Well, so. Which is what I, as a speaker at today's conference, have for you all. I have nothing, nada, zip, zilch, zippo. Nothing smart, nothing inspirational, nothing even remotely researched at all. I have absolutely nothing to say whatsoever. And yet, through my manner of speaking, I will make it seem like I do. Like what I am saying is brilliant. And maybe, just maybe, you will feel like you've learned something. Now, I'm gonna get started with the opening. I'm gonna make a lot of hand gestures. I'm gonna do this with my right hand, I'm gonna do this with my left, I I'm gonna adjust my glasses, and then I'm gonna ask you all a question. Uh, by show of hands, how many of you all have been asked a question before? <laughs> okay, great, I'm seeing some hands. And again, I have nothing here. I'm gonna make it intellectual. I'm gonna bring it to this man right here. Now, what this man did was important, I'm sure. <laughs> but I, for one, have no idea who he is. I simply Google image the word scientist. <laughs> and to follow that up, let's take a look at some graphs. Now, if you take a look at this pie chart, what you're going to see is that the majority far exceeds the minority. <laughs> Everybody see that? And see, it feels like it might make sense, doesn't it? Like maybe, just maybe, I'm building to some sort of satisfying conclusion. I mean, I'm gesticulating as though I am. I'm pacing, I'm growing in intensity, I'm taking off my glasses, which, by the way, are just frames. So our body has much more impact. What was the lesson here? Uh, in Hebrew, the lesson is if you, uh, there's a few words, like you say, if you, 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 if you
So well, if you talk about nothing or bullshit, you have to do it with the right body language. The body language is very, very important when you portray a message, when you bring a message. And when we talk about a body language, we it's very important for us to also look at the face. The face is a very, very important place to understand what's going on. And because we have a short time and I want to give you lots of um, knowledge, I'm going to talk about a subject which is called microexpression. What is microexpression? A microexpression is a very brief involuntary facial expression that you may make as, as, as an emotion. It usually lasts between 0 0.4 uh, seconds to 0 0.5 seconds and cannot be fake. And cannot be fake. Ekman, uh, Paul Ekman, uh, who is the leader in the topic, found out that there are Seven, seven different universi uh, universal emotions that uh, portray and gives us what we call uh, these emotions that we can understand. Like I spoke early on about the micro emotions of, of someone uh, laughing at or uh, uh, not, not giving the right thing about what you say. Uh, the, these expressions and these motions are very, very important because first of all, if you see someone, you will be able to understanding better during a job, during an interview, during a negotiation, and you'll be able to improve your relationship between your friends, family, and members. There are seven major, major um, facial expressions. And about 10 years ago, there was a, a great TV show, which was called uh, Lie to Me with Tim Roth. And we will see two minutes, we'll show you how, how strong was these micro emotions that uh, he showed he was able to find out very, very quickly without, without the person talking much, just by showing his motion where he planted the bomb. So we see that, and then we'll, we'll talk about a bit about uh, face reading, which is also uh, very, very important. So, uh, when we talk about uh, micro, uh, micro emotions, that's very, very important part of, of, of a personality to be able to understand what he feels. The micro emotions, you have uh, large emotions, you have small emotions, and you have what you call the micro emotions. And to be able to read them, everyone can learn how to read them. Everyone can know how to understand uh, uh, body language. There are a few important things to do when, when we do is to be able to listen. And when we listen to the person in front of us, is listening is to look at him, look, look at his face, look at what he does. What happens to us as business owners and as people that are trying to sell something, we spend lots of time trying to, to pitch ourselves, to try and, and show how good we are and how strong with the knowledge we have. We don't listen to the person in front of us. We don't listen to what he says. We don't listen to what he does. We don't look at him at what's happening to his emotions. And, and what's a little thing that if you can get from this lecture is to be able in a place where you listen to the person in front of you, listen to what he says, listen to what he do. By the way, what, yeah, I have a question for you. What do you see first in a person? When someone comes to you, what is the first thing that you see when a person comes to you? You can write which down. Body part? Yeah, which body part? Do you see the eyes, the face? What, what do you see? People say eyes. You can try more. What can you see in a person? The first thing that you see when it comes to you. So the first thing that you see is the hands. The hands, why? Because we survivors, we look at the hands. So when you approach someone and you talk to someone and you don't show your hands, it looks very suspicious because we try and see if he has something, right. if he carries a knife or something. And by the way, when we shake hands, now we're going to shake hands. Wait, I'm I'm see. Yeah. When you shake hands, why do we shake it three times? Because it's not a knife, it drops out, exactly. That's part of it. When we drink wine, in Hebrew we say lechaim. Why do we say lechaim? Because a long time ago, there was maybe a poison between, and so you say lechaim. So there, there's a reason for everything. So when we, you talk to someone and you show something to someone, try and show your hands. By the way, also on Zoom, you even put your hands up, it looks weird, but putting your hands up, shows the person that you have nothing to hide. In the States, uh, the jury the jury decides who goes to prison or not. And they found out that lots of the criminals that 
do not show the hands, go more than those who, who show the hands. If you show your head, you show to a person that that you that 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 there is nothing to hide. People want to see the hands. And and by the way, is it good to shake hands or not? When you meet someone, even business wise, is it good to shake hands? Does it give you points or not? Yes, it is good. Yes, it is good. Of course, it's good. They also the in the states they they had an experiment. They took uh, university students, like uh, 40 university students. Someone says not always. We'll talk about it later. They took 40 students and they had to return a library book. And the librarian, the one librarian, have, have, she had to, to hold their hands or touch their hands when she received the book. And the other one did not, did not touch the hand. And then they asked the students, who do you think is more friendlier and better? They said the one with the, that that touched the hand. People do like the warmth. They do need the warmth. And, and yes, someone said, how do you shake? Of course, there are different ways to shake a hand. If we shake a hand, for example, you if you shake, it has to be straightforward and look at a person at the face. If I shake my hand like this, where uh, Nero's hand is above me, he shows that he's, 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 he's above me. By the way, Donald Trump is a master handshaker. He shook his hand to Putin. What did he do? He went with his hand like this, and then he went like this with his other hand. He went three times to show I'm taking care of you. He almost broke uh, uh, the prime minister of Japan who, part, who was, was killed uh, a few months ago. He almost broke his hand when he shook his hand. When, when the, the Supreme High Court and he met on the Supreme High Court, they had a battle fighting battle, who's going to hold, who's, who's a stronger uh, using the hand. So the hands is very, very, very important to shake. And you're right, depends how you, you shake hands. By the way, how do uh, politicians shake hands? They go like this. They go like this. And, and, and that's, that's, people don't like this shake because it's what you call a politician's uh, handshake. Uh, by the way, uh -huh. very interesting question. Another question I have for you. Uh, it's about lying because micro expression is very important also for lying. We won't have a session about lying because we have short time, but who lies more? I know we are seeing only guys, but who, who lies more? Uh, yeah, the man yeah, or the female? I think we've got a couple of females. Yeah, you might. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. So uh, please uh, write down who lies more, males or females? Idan wrote males. Uh, Leo says the same. Neil said the same. So, by the way, it was decided that the males lie more. And why do the males lie more? You're right, Idan. Why do the males lie more? Because we are scared of the woman. We act as if we are the strong race, you know, the, the strong way, but <laughs> male, the, the, the the males are scared of the women, and that's why they, they lie more. Um, by the way, uh, we talk about in the next few minutes, it's, we don't have much time, but we'll talk about uh, face reading. Okay, so what we talked about, we talked about a bit about body language. There's so much on body language, but it's so important. There's also about micro expression, but there's also a bit about face reading. What does the face say about a person? So, First of all, before I start about the history of face reading, it's very important for me to try that today uh, you will pick up things to learn and look at people in, in further details. So first of all, you have positive signs and you have negative signs. You can see a person and you can see if he's positive or he's negative. How do we see? We can see, before we talk about face reading, if he looks forward, if he approaches you, if he tilts his head, is he agreeable, agreeable what you say? Does he has open body language or he has closed body language? There is so much to the body language, but what's important is to be able to, to see and feel the person in front of you. And if we wish to make better impression, we even imitate at the beginning, the same body language as the person that we meet. We even even we can talk in the same the same uh, uh, rhythm. 
in the same rhythm. We can even listen and talk in the same rhythm because once we talk in the same rhythm and we use similar body language, we create a mirroring. And this mirroring creates in the person in front, yeah, someone wrote mirroring, it creates a feeling in, in the person in front of us as if we are very, very similar. And people like to, to mix with people that are similar to them. Someone talked about uh, communication styles, exactly. It's also in communication styles. It's very, very important to understand the person. If I take myself and I take uh, Neil, for example, who is next to me. Neil, come, 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 come to the camera. Let's okay, see then I see you. Okay, so if we talk about Neil, uh, Neil, Neil, by the way, is very, very, what we call, very, he talks, uh, he doesn't talk much. He's very sharp. He's very, uh, what we call, very accurate. He's a person who's very, he's straight to the point. And if we look at his face, you can see that the face also shows it. How do we see that the face shows it? Usually people that, that um, are very open and very emotional, you see these big eyes, these big lips, everything is big and, and soft. And if we look here at, uh, at uh, Nir, you can see that, 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 that the mouth is slightly closed, okay? As if he keeps everything inside. The eyes are not so big, but they're open. It means that he's very straightforward and, and, and he has very wide, wide face. That means he takes upon himself a lot. But when I communicate with Neil, although Neil learned a lot, because when I met Neil, and we're talking about 10 years ago, when I met Neil the first time, he was far a more even dominant, a, 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 a domination. He was far more a short, and pointed today, he learned, he made a lot of work himself. He studied and he learned communication styles and he learned lots of things. And, and, and he learned to, to soften his, his quickness and his sharpness. But um, if I meet someone like uh, Neil, I know that the meeting will be very short, very accurate, very to the point. He doesn't babble and talk so much. And I'm a person that, uh, will talk a lot, will we'll speak a lot. And when you understand what kind of person you are dealing with, you are able to talk to him and communicate better by adapting his communication style at the beginning. And it's very, very important to understand this. And um, the, I always love to give the example of going to the elevator, okay? You have those who go to the elevator and before, they go into the elevator, they actually uh, judge and weigh the people in the elevator. And then they look at the side to see if, if, if they can go into the elevator, if they don't go above, because they are very accurate and they are very, very, everything has to be very accurate. You have those who go to the elevator and they don't see anyone. They press the number of the, the floor that they want to get into and, and they, they don't look around. You have those that talk softer and slowly, they don't talk so quick. Those will open the elevator and help others go into the elevator. And you have me that are going to the elevator and then my daughters say, stop talking to everyone. And, and, and why it's important <laughs> to understand the person's uh, uh, communication style is that if I meet someone like Neil, for example, and, and I may meet him for the first time, I need to know that I have to talk very accurate, very quick. I don't talk much about the family. I'm straight to the point. Because what could have happened is that I could talk a lot about the family and lots of things. I go home and say, wow, I had a great meeting with Neil. Neil would go home and say, wow, this Eitan, he talked so much, he gave me a headache. And, and even now that we are sitting and standing, we're not sitting, we're standing, by the way, which is great. I love this, what Neil has. He even has a place that he doesn't sit when he works. He stands because he cannot spend so much time sitting. He has to be, be in a movement all the time. And, 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 and once you understand that, you adapt your communication style. But you can also adapt the face reading. You can actually read the person's face. And if we talk about face reading, face reading goes back thousands of years ago. The Chinese were masters at face reading. Moses, Moses was said to be able to read faces. 
And throughout the generations, people learned how to read faces. They learned how to understand. And today it's going back to, to, to give lots of output. And I have a question for you about uh, face reading without you knowing anything. I have a few questions and try and see how interesting it can be. And if you meet someone, okay, who would you think has the more ability to take upon himself things without knowledge, okay? Who has the ability to take upon his things, has more confidence to take upon his things, things without knowledge? A person who has very wide face, like Niv, for example, and me an example, and Liam, for example, that we saw, and, uh, and, and Doron, for example, as we saw, very wide face, or a person who has a very no, narrow face, who takes upon himself things without the knowledge, a person who has a very wide face or a person who has a very narrow face? Try and write down, who takes upon himself more? Wide face or narrow face? It doesn't mean that he is more confident, but wide face or narrow face? Wide, yes, Liam, you're very accurate. Leo, yes, wide. You will see a, a wide of, or, or narrow. If a person has wide face, generally they take upon themselves more than they are capable to. And a person who has a very thin, a, a narrow face will take upon things once he has the knowledge. Okay, it doesn't mean that this person is more confident than the other one. It means that they ability to take upon themselves things. Another question, if you meet someone, if it's a female or a male, if a person has big eyes in correspond to small eyes, who is more emotional? A person with big eyes or a person with small eyes? Big. Exactly. Big eyes. If a person has big eyes, generally they, they are more emotional. Hey, Leo, you're accurate. When a person has big eyes, generally they're more emotional. And when a person has very small eyes, they can be more, uh, uh, keep motion inside. Someone who has thick lips with someone who has narrow lips, who would be, uh, be talking more? I know Liam talks a lot, he said he talks a lot, but, and, and, uh, but generally a person who has big lips, big, big mouth, who would be talking more? A person who has thin, thin lips, who would be talking more? Try and, and think about people that you know, people that you have met. For example, uh, we used to have a prime minister that did not talk much. He had very thin, thin lips, Ehud Barak. He used to talk very, hardly ever talked. Something happened to him this last few years and he talks a lot, he doesn't stop talking. But if we go back when he was a prime minister, he hardly talked, he had very thin lips. And a person that keeps emotion, he keeps inside, you'll see that he has thin lips, okay? When you keep things inside, most, lots of people who, who uh, work for security, uh, uh, lots of security or armed forces, who keeps lots of secret themselves, they keep, you can see on the face that they keep the emotion. They don't show much what, what they feel and it portrays on the face. A person that had hard life and did not talk much, usually the 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 thin the thick the lips are very thin. By the way, they they had a, a great experiment, a big experiment in the states where about thirty years ago they watched about twenty people that went into prison, and when they went into prison, before they went into prison, the lips were very thick, and twenty years later, when they came out of prison, they had no lips. And you can actually, lots of things you can change in your face. You have what we call face yoga. You can actually make things and improve them. We have a, a singer whose name is Golan. Golan himself, 30 years ago, he had no lips and today has thick lips. Because when we use things, when we use our lips, we can use many things very, very much. And when we talk about face reading, I do want to give you an actual, interesting, very important, um, a thing about face reading, and it's about stress. I think it's a very, very important lesson. How do you, when you meet someone, how do you know that he's very stressful, he's under stress? How do you people 
when you meet someone on meeting or family or at work or whatever, how do you know that he's under great stress? Try and write down, how do you know a person is under great stress? Under pressure, exactly. How do you how do you know? How do you how do you know that someone is under great great stress? So the eyes, the eyes, they give you the answer. By the way, the eyes give you the answer of being stressed. You, there are also a few other things, but but yeah. but but we'll see now. The, the jaw is kind of locked. It can it can be also the jaw, but you have a very great uh, thing. I'm going to show you this nice person that people. Is, uh, lips are thick. This person that we like very much, does he show you that he's under stress here? Uh, uh, Nasrallah, it's the Sheikh Nasrallah, who's been giving us problems for, for about 35 years or something. Does he look here that he's under stress? What do you say? No. No. By the way, if you look at his tongue, you can see that he's not eating enough uh, vegetables. <laughs> he has to uh, eat more vegetables. And on this picture, Okay, on this picture, it actually shows that he's going to show Israel what he's going to do to Israel. He's actually uh, acting and playing that like he's a he's very powerful man and he's not under stress. But if we look at the next picture, okay, we look at the next picture, is he under stress here? Indeed, he's under stress. By the way, it's, it's the second day, second or third day after the second Lebanon war. Uh, uh, the Israelis bombed his, uh, his place and he came out, he tried to show the world that he is uh, he's alive. So first of all, his hand, you can see his hand and he's very pale. But if you look at his eyes, if you look at his eyes, he's okay, eyes. he's covering one eye. But if you look at the, at the left eye, you see this whiteness? Okay, you see this whiteness? I'll show it here. Oh, well, if you look at the person, when you look straight ahead and you see this whiteness here, you can pay uh, and and very important to look straight ahead, not to look from down up at the level, at the face level. A person is in the same level as you, and you see this whiteness, you know that he's under stress. The stress doesn't have to be for a long time, but he's under stress. He's under stress, and the stress uh, uh, will go away. It's a, it's not a stress for a long time, but it takes time to become so stressful. By the way, people who are very sick who has a kidney transplant, you will always see it. Someone that was very ill will also saw it, see it. But a person that is under stress, that, that is a very, very important sign. And it's very important sign for me to, sh to, to show you because it's a lesson for life. It's a lesson for life. And we have five minutes uh, near the same. So I will give you another, another tip, which is will be very, very good. Look at here, this is a, Ulmer, before he, he was judged, before he went into prison, you can see the whiteness, his whiteness. And the next step will be about how did I know that Liam and Doron sees mistakes from a kilometer? Mm. How did I know it? It's not that I'm an expert. The face tells a story. So before I show you, how do you see that a person has a very strong critical perception? If you look at my eyes, okay? I'm smiling, when I'm smiling, okay, the outer corners of my eyes, they go up. But when I'm cross, when I'm cross, you'll see that the outer corners, they go down. You have these two lines going across, but you can see that the outer corners are going down. Okay, if you look at me, I'm coming closer. You can see the outer corners are going down. That, that is the critical perception. Okay, if you look at the right side, you can see that the outer corner of the eye is going down. If it's in, in the same level, it's average. And if the outer level is going up as if I'm smiling, it means that the person has a low critical perception. If you look here at you, Grant, you can see that the outer corner of his eye goes down. That means that he has very high critical perception. And why is it important to know that, Nir? Why is it important to know that the person is very critical? So if I, in a meeting with Liam, I am meeting with Doron, and I'm not accurate, and, and I don't present them with the right things, and, and, and I'm not accurate, then I'm losing many points. And it's also very important for me to know that when I'm going to a meeting with a person who is very accurate, and there are also different signs, more signs, but this is one sign, 
I know that I have to be accurate and 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 to not try and and beating around the bush. Be more accurate, more punctual, and more more accurate. So this is a, a picture which shows that a person is, has a low critical perception. It doesn't mean that she doesn't see mistakes. It, she just um, doesn't point them out a lot. So what we had today, we had a bit. I try to give you to spice you up with body language, with face reading, and a bit of micro expressions. And um, this is my profile aside. And to sum it up, before we go, I want to show you a, sh um, a film that uh, uh, gave in the states. Um, it's it, the the you'll hear it. This is a. a Someone talking about right? who is the founder and chief instructor of Krav Maga Academy USA. Matan has trained U.S. Navy SEALs, U.S. Army Rangers, and is actively working with NYPD Tactical Training Unit in design, practice, and implementation of Krav Maga to the New York Police Academy. Matan has a solid reputation for being one of the leading Krav Maga experts in the world. Matan has been featured as an expert in various media channels, including National Geographic, CBS. Fox, BBC, and New York Times. Matan said some interesting information on Eitan Segev, the profiler. When I was first introduced to the idea, I was extremely skeptical. Right? I, didn't, I didn't believe that, that uh, one can decode another human being with relative ease. It does require some training, but the relative ease, and one can have so much information about another person. Uh, uh, that changed though when I've met Eitan and if you can find his little square there uh, he's gonna give you a little wave Eitan Segev who is a uh, uh, really the, the expert in the field of personology face reading lie detection uh, in Israel he's been doing it for many many years he's gonna tell you how many years he's been doing it but I know at least you know when I met him he was already doing it many years eight or nine years ago uh, and uh, and the reason that we were actually introduced, it's actually a funny story, that the reason we came, we came to be introduced is because I was working on, back then I was very much in tune with, the, uh, with law enforcement in New York. So my clientele wasn't so much regular people. There was also regular people, but I was working primarily with, uh, uh, with law enforcement units and I had my sights on JFK. On the on the on the fighters of the airport of JFK, you know, these are the guys that if a drug dealer needs to come in, they they're gonna they're gonna rush in, take them down, whatever, right? It's like something violent happens. So I started the process of of going into JFK and and teaching them, you know, the things that I that I know. But I wanted to bring something unique and something special. And I believe that a high level lie detection series from Israel, which is probably different slash better than what they're experiencing now. That's what, what I've seen with my work with law enforcement is that the stuff that I picked up in Israel was usually superior to the stuff that they already had. So it was very easy for me to make a good impression. Um, so I wanted to bring a, a lie detection because some of these people, they only have a minute, sometimes two minutes to talk with somebody and figure out if they if they're suspicious enough, like if, they're, if there's a reason to ask them more questions, right? Um, just think about terror attacks that could have been prevented, drugs that would have been circumvented, uh, and other issues that happen in, in the, uh, other security issues that happen in the airport because people lie. Um, so, so that's why I was introduced to Eitan by a mutual friend that is very, very involved in security training around the world. Um, and uh, and I was pretty much blown away by the depth of knowledge and by and and I put it to the test and it worked for me so many times since. Uh, uh, you know, I did I did end up I did end up pitching to the guys at JFK. The guys on the ground loved it. Their commanders loved it. The captain loved it. So that never so we never actually got that contract. But what I did get from that is. Some tremendous insight into the world of lie detection and micro expressions and face reading through Eitan's teaching. Um, you know, he, he was my, my my first real coach when it came when it came to that world. I have used those techniques in personal relationships. I've used them in hiring when, when I hire people. I use them in, in during during negotiations. I use it all the time. Uh, it never fails me.
it never fails me. My time. Guys, um, I'd like to thank Ethan. Uh, it was great. And you're welcome to the emails. We're going to send recording to everyone and going to publish it. And if someone wants more information and perhaps have Ethan again, come visit us. If someone wants more information, what can be done, um, we definitely uh, welcome to touch base with us. And uh, thank you all for being here. Let's